Tim Crosby here for ASFIC TV. At the 2012 Victorian Track and Field Championships, there was a strong component for athletes with a disability. I'm joined today by Tim Matthews, who's the Manager of Development and Pathways for the Australian Paralympic Committee. Tim, lots of competitors out there at the VIX this year, and obviously lots going through to the Australian Championships in a couple of weeks. Yeah, that's right. Obviously, it's a part of the qualification process for athletes to qualify for London, like it is for the Olympic athletes. So a lot of athletes are still chasing qualifiers. So that's why there was a pretty big contingent of athletes at the Vic Champs who will obviously back up again in a couple of weeks' time at the Australian Championships. Uh, Kelly Cartwright, Jess Gallagher, their names that we know well. Who are some of the up-and-comers that we've got in the, uh, the AWD ranks? Yeah, there's a range of um, young athletes that have been around for a while but probably haven't reached qualification. Um, a guy from New South Wales, Ed Howarth, who's come out throwing discus, javelin. Um, he's a baloney amputee, lost his leg not too long ago. So there's a number of young athletes that are, I guess, pushing some of the older athletes out of the team, which is a good thing. We've seen Bridie Moore in recent years in the seated shot. Uh, yep. Could you just give us a bit of an explanation about the seated events? Secured shot put, discus, um, I guess athletes can actually walk in some of those events. Predominantly, it's for athletes who compete in a wheelchair, who might get around in a wheelchair, can't ambulate. They basically are secured to a frame, um, so they can throw shot put, discus and javelin and not fall over if they were standing up or if they were just throwing from their regular day chair. So each frame is individually designed for that individual athlete to suit their height, their weight, their specifications. Australia seems to do very well when we get to Paralympic level. Why is it that we do so well in this country? Yeah, I think we've had a good history of success in the Paralympic Games. Australia's competed in every Paralympic Games since the first Games in 1960 in Rome. Uh, we've been really successful in track and field. In 2000, uh, in Sydney, we smashed everyone. We finished on top of the medal tally, won 62 gold medals. You know, I was lucky enough to be a part of that. So it's good to see that, I guess, some of the legacy of that is living on in that there are a lot of athletes coming through. Uh, it's a lot tougher to win medals now, which is a good thing. Uh, the depth of Paralympic sport is a lot more, a um, lot stronger than it has been in the past. A lot of the African nations are now doing well, a lot of amputees. It's difficult to reach the Paralympic Games just because you have a disability doesn't entitle you to go to the Paralympic Games. There's qualification standards and it's often a little bit more complicated to an extent to get to the Paralympic Games than it is the Olympic Games. And that's partially because there's a quota system. In track and field, there's a thousand athletes across the board. Doesn't matter how many athletes are qualified, there's a thousand. And Australia will earn a percentage of, of that thousand. Um, hopefully we'll have about somewhere between 40 and 45 athletes on the team, but we may have more, more than that that have actually qualified. So it's important for athletes to get as high a qualification result as they can for their individual events to to secure selection, which, um, you know, I think we'll have a pretty strong team, which is good. What's it take to get into AWD type athletics? How do people normally start? Yeah, I guess essentially the, the first thing is you want to you want to do athletics like uh, it is with any sport, whether it's footy or cricket or tennis or golf. For those that want to do athletics, you join your local club. There's shield competition where athletes with a disability are just included in regular competition, irrespective of your disability. Um, so that's the first point of call. And then there's, through having a disability creates more opportunities to participate. So there's events at state champs for athletes with a disability. There's events at national championships. You can go on and participate at the Paralympic Games. So there's a lot of athletes that uh, compete in disability sport that um, someone like myself who I wouldn't have become an Olympian had I had two arms, but through having one arm, I was able to represent my country, compete at three Paralympic Games, um, travel to 18 countries, met a lot of people. So there's a lot of opportunities through having a disability that um, you know, are worthwhile pursuing for those that are interested. So moving on to London, who are some of your tips for the Victorians to, to watch out for? Yeah, there's a few. There's Richard Coleman's backing up. Again, he won a gold medal in Beijing. I'd expect him to do really well. Um, the likes of Russell Shorts going to his sixth or seventh games, throwing shot put. Um, not sure if he'll do discus, but he's a, he's a medal contender there. Some of the emerging athletes that haven't competed at a Paralympic Games, um, I think will do relatively well. There's a couple that have been to a Games before. Callie Cartwright competed in Beijing. She's now the world record holder in the long jump and likely to do well in the 100 metres as well. Um, Jessica Gallagher competed at a Winter Paralympic Games. Um, vision impaired, yet she's 
strong metal contention uh, in both her events, the long jump and the javelin. So there, there's a few athletes that I think will do really well. Um, I'd expect Kelly to win a couple of medals. Um, Jack Swift, who's a um, Melbourne athlete, who uh, he's got to run against Oscar Pistorius. So Oscar's running 45 seconds, will probably run at the Olympic Games, double baloney amputee. Um, Jack's up against him. So some events are a little bit stronger than others, but that's just the nature of the sport. So post-nationals, what will be the uh, preparation path for? Yeah, the majority of the team will be named um, towards the end of April. Uh, and then there'll be a camp, a training camp I think is being planned for June on the Gold Coast, um, where the whole team will be expected. Some of the wheelchair athletes will actually go across and race in Europe um, because there's uh, some really good opportunities for them. For most of the other athletes, they'll be based in their home port. They'll stay in Australia and, and train. Um, I know the athletes that I look after will, you know, we've got a solid six week block planned after a little break after nationals and then um, before we get into some competition towards the end of August and then Paralympic Games obviously start 29th of August so uh, it'll come around pretty quick.